What's going on, my good people? Mike Hidalgo here. Thank you for joining us on another FCP Euro DIY. Today, we're going to be working on a 2013 Volvo XC90 P2. Today on the XC90 behind me, we're going to be covering how to replace your bore motor and or bore motor resistor. These are two pretty typical common failures on the P2 chassis, and this one is no exception behind us. Currently, it is facing an intermittent problem, meaning that the blower motor itself is working fine, but it's not always receiving a proper signal, and on these 90 degree hot days that we've been having lately, that's certainly not a problem we wanna have. So, what can happen is usually either the blower motor itself will fail, the motor will, will seize, and it'll stop spinning. Uh, what usually does happen, though, is these resistors tend to burn out. If you remove your plugs, sometimes you may see some actual charredness or meltiness going on within the connectors, which is why I suspect it's happening to the XC90 behind us as it is in and out. So with that today, we're gonna go ahead and cover and show you how to go ahead and replace that. It's a little bit uncomfortable, so make sure you clean out the passenger side of your foot well, get yourself nice and cozy. In some situations, you may want to remove the seat if you have the time and the tools to do so just to give you a lot of room to work with. And speaking of tools, let's take a look at some of the tools we're gonna to need for this DIY. For this job, it's gonna be pretty basic, my good people. Most importantly, a T25 is gonna be needed for this job. We have a 13 mil, a 10 mil, and an eight mil as well. We have a combination of a quarter inch drive ratchet and a three eighths drive electric ratchet, as well as a small six inch extension. Something you may need, but not pictured here, depending on the condition of your vehicle, is a vacuum. Uh, especially, you want to vacuum up the work area that you're going to be in, so the carpeting, take the mat out. And then, depending on what is behind the carpeting, you might find a treasure chest of uh, maybe some seeds. If you have a little bit of a critter situation, you know, these cars are older, it's a possibility. So anyways, all I'm saying is keep a vacuum handy. Let's get started on this DIY. All right, my good people, to get started, this is going to be quick and brief. In the back of the XC90, we're going to go ahead and undo the battery. We're just going to undo the negative terminal. Uh, it'll just make sure that we don't trip up anything underneath the dash, uh, especially with unhooking and plugging back in wires and resistors and all that good stuff. So, super easy. In the back, we're going to lift up this rear cover. That's going to lift up like so. Then we can go ahead and remove this lower portion of our cover. I'm just going to pull up on that fold this up together. Once we have that out of the way, we have three 13 millimeter bolts that hold down the shield over our battery box. So I'm just gonna use a 13 on an electric ratchet and zap these out. We have one on either side and one in the back between the jump seats. Then we can pull up this cover. And that gives us access to the 10 millimeter nut, which we're gonna undo, but we're not gonna remove all of the way. All right, now that we have the battery undone, let's hop up front and get comfy underneath the dashboard. All right, my good people, we are at the front of the XC90 on the passenger side. That's where the blower motor is located. If you haven't already, before disconnecting your battery, make sure your seat is all the way back, so that way you have the most room to work with. So we're gonna work on removing a couple panels, removing the glove box, just to give us a little bit more room to work with. So the first thing is gonna be is this panel over here on the side to the right of the center console. You'll see there's already a grab on it that you can simply put your hand in. Sometimes the trim comes out. This one's already in pretty loose shape. Pull this out and just set it to the side. With that to the side, our next thing is gonna to be to remove this under panel. I see two T25s here at the front. We're gonna go ahead and zap those out. We'll take those out, pull this trim piece out and set it to the side. We'll keep the T25s with the hardware or with the plastic trim so we know where everything went. All right, with that under panel now removed, the next thing we're gonna do is remove a couple more T25s that hold in the glove box, just to give us a little bit more of a view and working room. We have three at the bottom that we're gonna undo, uh, three more T25s, so let's zap those out. And now with those three removed, we gotta open the glove box to access some more hardware. We have two T25s on either side of the glove box. We'll zap those out first. Then we have two more underneath the lip here of the dash. And then just be sure if you have any aftermarket wiring, like this car does, this one has a USB uh, cord going through it, that you just unclip those, get them out of the way so you don't pull them out by accident. I'm just gonna do that here. This car has a alligator clip pulling that in, that'll pop up there. Now we can go ahead 
and pull the glove box out. We just want to be mindful that there may be an electrical connection or two behind here, usually for the glove box light. Here's our connections for our glove box light. Just going to pull these back. We have one more here at the back. Just push in the tab and pull back. And now we can set the glove box to the side. All right, my good people, with the glove box out of our way, we have a little bit more working room to see what we're doing here. So here is our HVAC uh, blower box on the passenger side. You can see the bottom of our fan casing goes into that. So while it doesn't give us a lot more room to kind of see the fan itself, it does give us access to these two eight millimeter bolts, which we're gonna undo just to give the box assembly a little bit of play, which may help us in gain some of the harder reach uh, hardware underneath the blower motor cage. So with that, I'm gonna take an eight mil socket and zap out these two eight mils. All right, with those undone, should give us a little bit of play here. Now we're gonna hop underneath and undo the electrical connectors for the blower motor assembly. We have this first one here, which is just a gray tab. You're gonna push that in and pull down. Connector looks good. The next one actually lives underneath this cover, which is held in by a couple T25s, which we can get to once this cage is removed. Uh, to give us a bit more room to drop this down though, we're gonna have to pull down the carpeting. And to get the carpeting down, we're gonna have to remove this uh, silt trim over here on the right. So with that, let's pop this off first, and then we can fold the carpeting down. To get this trim piece off, we're just gonna lift up. Get that lifted up there. Just a couple clips underneath here, kind of like what you would see on your door card. Just get a good grip on it first and then lift up firmly. All right, with that removed, we can now fold this carpet back towards us. All right, that should give us enough room to work with now. Now comes the, uh, the fun part of getting underneath here with a T25 and removing the five screws that hold this whole assembly in. So with that, let's get to it. Next, my good people, we're gonna remove our drain. This one comes off the bottom of the cage and goes into the uh, wheel well over here. To go ahead and remove that, you're just gonna pull it out. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pop it out of here, get it out of our way. Now we're gonna start working on removing some of the T25s that hold this cage in place. So we're just gonna start getting a view on them with the cameras and then we'll zap them out as we see them. Here we have three that we can access from this view. We're gonna go ahead and zap those out. Just kinda going in here so I can feel where they may be. All right, my good people, we are at the point where we have hit the notorious fifth bolt, the fifth torque screw that holds this cage into the HVAC box. It is truly impossible to get to. It is located behind the blower motor. You can almost feel the ridge that leads up to the T25, and it just disappears towards the firewall into the insulation. So truly what nightmares are made out of, it's this bulging insulation here, it's located pretty much almost behind the uh, drain port if you were to go straight up on the cage. And there's uh, no good way of getting to that bolt. This is why uh, the good people out there that do these DIYs and do this repair end up breaking that tab off of the cage and pulling the cage down. So we're gonna keep messing with it, seeing if we can find a uh, better solution, but we may just have to succumb to the internet, which is not a, uh, not always what we like to do, but truly the uh, Volvo write-up for this repair is a dash out, free undrained, uh, big service like that. So you can imagine why, because this whole box comes out with the, with the blower motor cage in it. So we're gonna keep working at it and uh, update you in just a little bit. Is it possible that someone has been down here already? Because this is coming out. We've only taken out four screws. So, I'm curious to see if someone's maybe been in here and replaced the blower motor in the past or the resistor because this is uh, coming out. So here's our blower motor assembly and cage. <laughs> and you can see, I don't think we did this just now, that someone's been in here before and they ended up just ripping out the little half of the ear here that holds the fifth bolt. All right, with the uh, blower cage assembly on the table here, we can see a good view of the fan. We can see a good view of the regulator here. This is what I'm suspecting failed. And just visually looking at it, it looks pretty aged out. So 
to get those apart, we're gonna go ahead and take this top off of our cage here. You start by lifting it on the end here and just kind of working your way around it. Careful not to break it. You can go ahead and set that to the side. We're gonna go ahead and unplug our fan motor to our regulator here. These plugs don't look horrible. Oftentimes you can see a little bit of charness or meltiness depending on how bad it is. Because this was intermittent, I don't think it's gotten that bad yet, but again, 90 degree day on the weekend, having this cut out, it's not the move. Up top here, we have two small T25s that hold the uh, blower motor to the cage. We're gonna go ahead and remove those. All right, with that we can push this motor out, out of the way. Here's our old blower motor. You can see on the inside there's some little uh, insulation rubber on the edges that kind of keeps everything nice and snug fit in there. With that we have two more T25s, one located right here at the bottom and one on the inside that we're going to go ahead and remove to get this regulator resistor. And we can push this thing out. With our cage assembly cleaned up, we can squeeze in our new regulator. It just goes in via the bottom. Make sure the plugs are protruding through on the top side or technically the bottom side. We're going to get our two T25s dropped back in. Get these snugged up. Because these are going into plastic, you don't need to crank them. Once they snug up, maybe a, an eighth of a turn, a quarter turn at most, and they're good to rock. There we go. With that, that is now installed and situated. And now we're going to go ahead and take our blower motor and feed that one in. We're going to want to make sure that it goes in the same way it came out, meaning that the uh, mainly the electrical cord is coming out via the same opening that the old one was. So with that. We're gonna go ahead and pop that through. Okay, I'm gonna make sure we line up our bolt holes up top, kind of just looking straight down from the bottom. And we just wanna make sure we get the two T25 started up top. Same thing, we're just gonna snug these up. You're gonna see the rubber seal in here start to compress just a little bit. Once you see that, you're good to go. Then we can bring our electrical connector over, make sure the plug looks good, there's no corrosion or anything on it. We can go ahead and plug that back in, tuck our wiring down down south like so. We're gonna pop this cover back on. Beautiful. Now that's assembled and ready to rock and roll, my good people, let's hop back underneath the footwell on the XC90 and get this uh, bore motor in. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and feed the bore motor assembly in. Again, being mindful of uh, bolter, screw number five, having to kind of key itself onto this tab. Um, be totally honest we're going to give it a try with this i would like the idea of it to hold it on still but if not we may have to just trim this little ear off before we feed it back in so we'll give it a shot like this first and then uh, if that doesn't work then we'll go ahead and uh, modify it a bit insulation's uh pretty thick here to get it back in so what i'm grabbing here is a flathead screwdriver to just basically get me over the lip of the insulation to get this cage back up in its home. Right now what I'm doing is I'm taking some dielectric grease. I've hit the desperation button and I'm going to use the dielectric grease as a lube to allow the cage to ride up on the insulation which it's funny looking at it now there's a ton of marks on it and it makes sense because some poor bastard like me has been in here before doing probably the same job and maybe just did the bore motor and not the resistor regulator. I'm blanking out on the name at this point. But with that, I'm gonna try a little bit of that, a little bit of that grease to see if it helps just give me that little bit of veg I need to get this thing up over the insulation. Pull the front of the dash forward towards you. It's gonna give you a little bit of room to get the cage wedged up behind this at least, and then you can angle it to get it up over the insulation. I have the cage assembly flush up against the uh, bottom of the blower box pretty nicely. So I'm going to take one of the easier um, bolt screw or bolt locations to get to and just get one of them started so it doesn't fall on us and lose its place. When you tighten these down, you don't want to go too hard. They are just going into plastic, so no need to gorilla them on all the way. Now we're going to put our cover back on while I have 
everything kind of lined up where I need it. Let me go ahead and tuck this up underneath the dash here. Make sure we're not pinching any of the blower motor cables as this goes back in, especially on the back side where the insulation is, which one of them's poking out. I'm gonna shove it back in. See, this cover ended up coming off during the install, but it made life a lot easier to have it out. All right, we're gonna get one of these easier to reach bolts started just so that we can hold everything up even better. All right, with number three in, now we can go for number four, which is gonna be our last one uh, in this case. So let's get ready for that one. Now we're going for our fourth bolt in the back. All right, that my good people is nice and snug. Now with that, we're gonna reinstall our drain once more. I'm just gonna feed that over, make sure we don't entangle ourselves with our harness. Feed that on. Pop it back in down here. Then we can plug our harness in once more. Beautiful. All right, now we have that on. We can grab our two eight millimeter bolts which go on top of here and get those resituated. All right, we're gonna snug these up using the electric ratchet. And now we can go ahead and get our tools out of here and get our carpet back over. So let's do that now. With that tucked in, we're gonna flip our carpeting back over, make sure it tucks in nicely, covering up everything we did here. Now we're gonna reinstall our side molding here. We're gonna make sure that our carpet is nice and tucked in. Boom, baby. Over here, this little cover has two small tabs in it. This locks in this front piece of trim and the rest of the B pillar. So make sure you pop these in back in uh, evenly. I'm gonna get this cover over and make sure it keys in to the B pillar. Bring it up. There we go. All right, back to the front. Now we're gonna install our glove box. I'm gonna go ahead and bring that over. We're gonna kinda set that like this. This needs to be fed back in. And we also have an electrical connector, which I hit away. This one just plugs in like this. And this box is gonna kinda key in. Make sure we get this USB cable back this way. This was alligator clipped here. Again, your car may not have this, but if it does, that's where the first clip was. Now we want to replug in our dome light. Thicker cable facing the center of the car. Small uh, plastic encapsulated on the inside. All right, now we have six T25s in here. So we'll go ahead and get those started by hand and just kind of snug them up. Now we have those bottom ones taken care of. I'm gonna switch back to my ratchet and just use the electric ratchet to snug up the rest. We're gonna go very gently. We are just going into plastic. No need to strip these. We'll put our USB cable back in this clip in here. If your car has that, don't forget to do that. And now we can just go ahead and close it. Now we have three T25s under here that we're going to get fed back in. There's three. Now we can put our under, under panel in one more time. This one just gets kind of fed in like so. Line it up nicely. Make sure the carpet is not still hooked up the wrong way there. There we go. There we go. Let's get this. T25 fed up here to hold it up for us. All right, with that in, we can get these tools out of the way. We just have to install the last uh, trim piece, which goes on the left-hand side of our work area here against the center console. I'm gonna feed this in, get this lined up. Line up the little tabs up against the trim. And just pop it back in. Now with that, my good people, we're gonna head back into the trunk, get our battery hooked up, and then we can test out the fan. Back here, we're gonna reattach our negative terminal. 
Get that on there gently. We're just gonna snug up this 10 mil. No need to crush it. Beautiful, it's nice and tight. Now we can take our plastic cover, get that fed back over. Just like so. Now we can get our metal bracket, get that stud lined up up top. We'll start with the two 13s on either side of the bracket. We'll get the 13 millimeter nut started by hand up front, and then we're just gonna go ahead and snug them down using the electric ratchet. All right, and then we're just gonna bring our carpeting back down. There we go. Let's go down and get this back down. And that, my good people, is gonna conclude this DIY for today. Uh, definitely top five of not favorite uh, DIYs to do on the P2 chassis, but with a lot of time, a lot of light, and a lot of patience, and maybe your cell phone to use as a mirror, or a mirror itself, uh, you can definitely get this job done. Again, the fifth bolt is not ideal. Um, dash out, HVAC box out kind of job if you're trying to do it 100% tip top the wall away. But otherwise, this should get it done, especially for an older rig like this. I think it's gonna be just fine. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments on what we did today or you wanna yell at me for the way I did this, leave that in the comment section below. And if you like this video and you wanna see more like them, please consider subscribing. We make new ones all the time. As always, thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.